Thursday Momos, uh, Alhamdulillah, we have come to our fourth, eh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Umu, if I am wrong, please correct me. Fourth um, brown bag session of uh, Anjuran Edek. And um, the last uh, couple of sessions has been very successful and informative. Um, and today we have similar program by, um, but to but this, this time we have um, different panels from different faculty. Um, uh, the first panel we have um, Dr. Hijaz. Um, uh, later we will hear from Dr. Hijaz where, where he is from and his um, experience and field learning and everything. But before I start with Dr. Hijaz, uh, um, I think as everyone uh, may have known, um, we are moving towards uh, micro-credential, um, buffet courses and, you know, that kind of um, learning experience in the future. Um, and not that now we have to kind of like embrace um, flip learning in our teaching method. Uh, and that's why we've been having this um, sharing session from the people across university who have been practicing flip learning as one of their teaching method as opposed to conventional teaching. Uh, allow me to just um, briefly exp uh, define like, flip learning. It's, it's like Dr. Azhar selalu cakap, flip learning is like we're flipping the table. So we are actually flipping the teaching from us doing most of the teaching to the students. So it's, 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 it's more of a self-directed learning, but very engaging. So, and I think um, this is my second chair, um, second second time sharing. I've pulled out some papers actually looking at the evidence on uh, flip learnings. They are actually the the evidence and the papers. People have been looking at it since two thousand, uh, the early two thousand tens, um, seventeen, sixteen. But it becomes more rampant uh, due to COVID, where uh, most university universities are closed and everything are taught online. I think. When looking at the evidence, uh, there seems to be a lot of um, positive vibes and positive um, feedbacks from the students as well as um, the, the lecturers about the benefits of, of using flip learning. Uh, nevertheless, we would like to hear the experience um, from our own uh, expert to be in University of Malaya. So um, I think first I invite Dr. Hijaz. Um, to introduce your, uh, himself to the floor and to um, tell us about uh, what actually inspired him to do flip learning. Um, oh, before that, we have Dr. Amarudin, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Amarudin, sorry. Uh, I miss you there. So, Dr. Amirudin is from Computer Science, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so let me just briefly um, introduce Dr. Amiruddin. So he's a senior lecturer at Department um, Computer System and Technology, FSKTM, and an acting director at the University of Malaya Professional Development and Leadership Center, UM Lead, yeah, Doctor? Um, he received his Bachelor in IT uh, Management in 2001 and MSc in Computer Animation um, back in 2002 from UM and Bournemouth University, UK, respectively. He obtained his PhD in Computer Science from UCL, University College London, in 2014. His research um, interests include human-computer interaction, authentication system, e-learning, mobile application, serious game, augmented reality, and mobile health system. So that's um, Dr. Amarude. So um, we do have another panel, Dr. Noor Janna from Faculty of Law. Uh, but she's not in the uh, she 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 is not in the room yet. But um, while waiting for Dr. Jana to uh, to come and join us, um, I would like to call upon Dr. Hijaz um, to share his experience or what inspired Dr. Hijaz to actually take up um, or uh, flip learning as one of your teaching uh, method in your class. And then after okay. that, we go to Dr. Amir. Thanks, okay. Dr. Ijaz. Thank you, Dr. Eliza and Dr. Mirudin. Uh, welcome, everybody. So, I'm Dr. Hijaz. So, I think I didn't provide my bio early. I apologize. I was a bit okay. <laughs> engaged with a lot of meetings yesterday and today. Um, okay, so firstly, uh, I'm 
I'm a senior lecturer at the Department of Geology, but actually oh. my degree is in mechanical engineering and then uh, my master's in petroleum engineering. And I was a dual PhD candidate um, at UC Malaya. Eh? So I did I have a PhD in geology and applied maths at the uh, Australian National University. Eh? So this is, uh, it will be my second year teaching at UM this coming January. Okay. Okay. So I actually joined the flip, flip learning, is it? Flip, yes. flip, flip classroom. Uh, I think earlier, several months ago, I saw it on, in, on uh, UM mail. Uh, of course, I, I acknowledge at that uh, to their, what I call the Emerald program. I think they did provide a lot of interesting tools that I adopted. Lah. New things that I just knew about how the tools, how to teach. Yeah? For example, using, of course, all the online platforms like Teams, Google Meets. And one of the tools that I frequently use is Padlet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the reason I was interested in flip learning because I was curious. I wasn't. I wasn't aware. I was taught that teaching is that. I was taught teaching is supposed to be in a classroom setting. Okay, so that's uh, already fixed in stone in my mind. But when I went to the emails, I yeah, just tell you, I do read the added emails <laughs> to see what they offer because uh, so I read the content. I was interested to see uh, how we can flip the classroom. Instead of us teaching, we can actually uh, save time where the students have to. Uh, sorry about that. I have to close my WhatsApp to my stuff. <laughs> so we we allow the students to learn outside the classroom, and then we engage them in the classroom. Eh? So the reason I take up this course and why I think it's very useful for me is because of time. Uh, because I think we are aware, uh, UM lecturers, we are not just teachers; we are researchers. So it's inevitable that we have to cancel classes eh, because we have to attend meetings, grant meetings, etc. So I feel very guilty when I have to cancel classes. I had to cancel classes yesterday because of meetings, <laughs> two meetings in the afternoon, but I attended one. So I use flip learning. So I already uh, prepared from, uh, so I've already learned about the flip learning, eh, the concept from Dr. Zahir Fitri. So I already, I know what materials I can provide for my students if somehow I can cancel class. So I think with the MCO, we use Teams, for example, Teams for our class recordings. And conveniently, all the previous class recordings are stored in Teams automatically. So for yesterday, I have a lecture slide number five lah, for the topic. So I asked the students to watch the video from 2021. OK, and then we will go to the tutorial next week. So that's example. So I don't have to feel guilty that to cancel class. I don't feel pressure to find replacement class eh, mm -hmm. because it's inconvenient for both me and the students. So I tell the students be prepared that I have to cancel. So I think it's important that we tell the students. I <laughs> tell them I do tell them that I will have to attend meetings, uh, no, or conferences. So they have to be prepared to learn on your own. So they need to be well informed. They need to be informed that they need to learn on your own. OK, and not to feel stressed. OK, and assure them that I will provide enough materials and support and tell them important. Tell them that they can contact me. Uh, by WhatsApp, so that's some sacrifice I have to make. Lah. OK, mm. uh, and for the tools for the materials, so I I have to tell the truth. I do not like to use Spectrum. <laughs> it's not my uh, favorite. But you just let's yes. let us get to the tools later. Yeah. Uh, perhaps maybe we can get Dr. Amaruddin. But before yeah, that, sorry. I would like to uh, welcome Dr. Nurjana uh, Chiu Li Hua uh, at one of um, uh, one more panel for this session. And Dr. Nurjana is from Faculty of Law. Eh? So we have um, uh, people from geology, and we we have people from science. Uh, and non-science faculty today sharing their experience and perhaps later when we get to the uh, challenges, we'll see the challenges um, in terms of different mm -hmm. faculties. Um, yeah. Prof. Amir, maybe uh, I can get you next to to hear your your inspiration uh, taking up uh, Flip Classroom or teaching uh, Flip uh, Classroom. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat tinggal hari. Uh, your voice is a bit too soft, uh, Prof. Okay, okay. Uh, maybe you can adjust it, it a little bit. Better? Not? It's a bit better, but not as loud as Dr. Hijaz. Sorry about that. 
uh, to get closer to my uh, oh, yeah okay. that's better yeah. a lot better now thank okay, you so, Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera, selamat tengah hari to Dr. Eliza, Dr. Hijaz dan Dr. Janna and all fellow friends to, uh, for joining this event. So first of all, thank you very much for organizing this. I really appreciate it. So uh, I guess that um, there are many experiences with uh, flip learning, uh, you know, experienced by our colleagues uh, in UM. So just to send from uh, my experience. So I believe that uh, flip uh, classroom is very interesting because it gives some sort of opportunity for us to uh, be creative. Be creative in sense that we do not just stick to the lecture notes or something like that, where it really sounds like traditional kind of methods. Rather, we have more interactive and more variety of options that we give to our students, even ourselves, learning throughout through all these materials. So uh, I think um, it's about uh, diversity in terms of the, the collections that we want to share. But at the same time, the elements that we need to stress in flipped classroom in terms of the uh, the guidance or the specific part of the material that you want to zoom in, that is very important to me. Else it become, um, you know, not focused or something that uh, perhaps not related to our learning outcomes or things that we specifically want to measure at the end of the class or even after the class. So I think we need as a instructor or lecturer, we really need to find those materials that we first need to review it, whether it's interesting, relevant or not, rather than we just, oh, we, we believe this might be useful or not. I think we have to be critically, uh, uh, you know, about uh, clear about that. What is the, let's say, for example, video or uh, short video or tutorials or uh, uh, any sort of uh, notes or lecture, um, you know, um, material, file document. So I think as an instructor, we need to zoom, you know, to which part that of this material that we want the student to focus on. And we want to discuss further during the lectures or something like that. Uh, so we have to be some sort of uh, give some guidance uh, to the to the our students. Um, so I think that's about it. And then uh, I think another thing is that uh, as Dr. Hijab mentioned, that is a good uh, opportunity for us to, uh, to focus, not to waste our time lingering around the bush, you know, not, not sure what to focus, but we, we that might help us in terms of uh, making sure that the student too can focus on the area that we want to test, you know, or want to discuss further. Or I think uh, in determining whether which part of the, uh, the parts of the material that you would like to share is relevant or not, we also need to make sure that uh, maybe we focus on the part that uh, you believe is challenging enough for the student to understand. I think general concept, I think we don't waste time on that things that uh, knowledge kind of level kind of things. Maybe we don't concentrate that much during the lecture, rather the one that needs more discussion, more um, discussion, not just us to the student, but also among the students, because sometimes the student can be more creative than us. So we need to admit that. So. They give more idea or insight into things that we look from different things, students look from different things, but at the end, we acknowledge that the diversity in terms of their feedback. So I think uh, as a, to start, that are the things uh, Dr. Adiza, that I think I can point out that we need to uh, give priority. Uh, Dr. Adiza, you are mute. Uh, yeah, thanks, Prof. Amin. Um, so moving on to Dr. Nojana Chiu, um, what actually um, inspire you to take flip learning and and uh, practice that in in teaching uh, your class? You are from law, so perhaps you know um, the challenges is different. But but what? But as for now, maybe you can tell us. Um, Besides not having to talk as much, like you know, straight two hours of teaching, what inspire you to to um, to practice flip classroom? I think the push, uh, first and foremost, uh, hello everybody, yeah, um, apologies for coming in late. Uh, I was having a class, I had to cut it short. Um, what what inspired me to go into flip learning? Um, basically, this idea of, of us uh, giving lectures and the students just listening over the years, I've been teaching for over 20 years, and I know for a fact that it's not a very effective 
uh, way of of uh, teaching and learning. Yeah. Uh, and over the years, I've sort of modified here and there. Um, the pandemic sort of pushed it further, right? Mm. Um, in terms of why we needed to uh, engage the students more rather than just giving lectures. Um, and in studying law, there are many things to cover uh, and, and to make it more interesting for the students. For example, I've, I've sort of flipped it around in terms of conventionally when assignments are given to the students, right, the lecturer would actually give uh, tugasan, the assignment question, and the, all the students will... will uh, we we'll try to uh, we'll try to answer that particular assignment. But what I've done uh, in this small example is that I hand it over to the students and ask them to identify. Uh, this session we are looking at cases. Identify a case that you want to analyze, and identify the issues that you want to to discuss. So, in that sense, I sort of hand over to the students that ownership of what is it that they want to learn and which case is more interesting because you know i can't cover everything so i've got 100 and almost 170 students so you can imagine the number of cases that i have to go through so in flip classes actually one has to be also brave in giving up that control mm -hmm. and giving it to the students to actually identify it um, what I found is that they are because because they are the ones who, who's choosing that question that, that question or that case. Uh, they take ownership of it and they they will actually put in more effort. Uh, so that's that's the interesting part where you know you you sort of um, instead of one way traffic, you get the students to actually participate and they identify that oh, that's one. The other way of looking at it is in terms of going deeper into a particular issue, the students are then able to, in, in group work, to have that discussion amongst themselves when you give them that ownership of identifying, okay, what's your group presentation, instead of me assigning it to them. Uh, and, and in law, I think, because I teach criminal procedure in in the in recent years, memang banyak case-case yang menarik, case Datuk Sri Najib, case Rosma, Right, so all these cases are very interesting, and the students want to explore all the different aspects. So instead of kita bagi concept, bagi statutory provision, right? Uh, students will look at it in, in a different way, like Dr. Amir said just now. Students are actually uh, very creative, more creative yes. than us, by the way, <laughs> because their presentations and their analysis are fantastic. Um, and I'll share afterwards, uh, uh, if we have time, the outcome of flipping the classes uh, in terms of the, the ach achievements, the assessment that I've, I've done, uh, if, if you see, you won't believe it. Yeah? I, I, because this is something that I'm really, really convinced it works because I've done it and I've experimented with it. Some of the students were very upset when ex I experimented with them, right? Uh, <laughs> Because because they're not used to it. They even say, oh, we prefer yes. exam. We prefer exam, right? So that's that's something that uh, you, you have to sort of uh, get the buy-in from the students that they are willing to uh, to join in the learning process, yeah? I think that's, I think, that's about it, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, what I can sort of like conclude um, from what the three panels have said is, uh, I think that... Um, the challenges uh, with students, especially, and that's where Dr. Hijaz and Dr. Amir mentioned about, um, you know, uh, uh, giving the right uh, instruction is very important because they really need to understand, they really need to know what they have to do um, and what your expectation. I think the, the previous panel also mentioned the same thing. So it's kind of like a challenge um, that comes from the students. Um, but before we focus on the students' perspective, from your perspective as a lecturer, what are the challenges in terms of preparation, in terms of getting access to tools and that kind of stuff that you 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 are facing 
when we know when when we talk about flip learning is a lot of preparation right like you need to upload all your information and your materials uh prior to the actual class so if we can if you can share your your challenges uh, when when you are when you were preparing your classes or still preparing it now so if you can share the challenges maybe we can start with dr hijaz first okay um uh since i attended the flip training course i'm currently teaching two courses lah and fortunately the class is very small <laughs> uh, less than 10 people okay uh, i believe uh, one there's a few challenges lah okay uh, is communication okay um our students tend not to talk to us okay so because i think it's a, i think it's a normal normal issue lah I mean, even ourselves i think we were like that i think because of our the way we you know we yeah, I think I that's think how it is. The, the conventional way of teaching. Yes, so that's we need what, to yeah. encourage them to show them that it's it's okay to talk to us. I tell them not to be afraid. There's no such thing as a wrong question, mm. and if they are shy, they are welcome to contact because we have WhatsApp emails, right? So we need to tell them there are avenues for them to contact us, right? Uh, sometimes so that sometimes there are students who disappear they don't attend for some reason and so i think one of the i i uh, i have some students they didn't come to class and they actually contact me lah okay i'm, I'm pleased yeah okay i think that's a positive result lah for me opening up uh, second challenge is of course the teaching materials so i teach a subject where uh, there's no right uh, uh, it's called geological data analysis it basically, it's like there's no right answer. So <laughs> the student needs creativity. So I need them to give answers. OK, uh, so I tell them what's an example of data analysis, you know, like, you know, I try to relate it to uh, yeah, that's why we need to think. We need to adapt to the current situation, the current uh, what I call uh, new things. Huh? For example, what we see on COVID, the COVID trends is something we learn in statistics. So I ask them, you know, how do we relate this to COVID, for example? Uh, so we need to, you know, change. Maybe next two years, maybe something else that related to the topics that I teach. So yeah. that something can be very, I mean, you have to think and you need to review the materials, huh? okay? And then having, encouraging the students to think, okay? I have a small class, so I try to not force them. So sometimes they will still don't want to give an answer, but I will spend time, just schedule them to, give an answer, you know, let's think, you know, give them examples. Okay, that's how we flip learning, we try to make the students give an answer, right? Examples mm. of something. So rather than I, I read out the list or this, this, I ask them, give me an example, okay? Uh, no. And yeah, and then of course, uh, finding a suitable medium for providing the materials. I just, before I just start, I, just, I don't like to use spectrum, that's my preference. <laughs> So it took me a while to experiment. So we had you know, several tools. Right? So I think every lecturer will have their own favorite way. Uh. I noticed my other colleague who share the course, she used a different platform for quizzes. I, I don't like that platform, but she prefers it. And I don't see any problem. So I have my other platform. It's similar as online quiz platform. Um, so there's a different preferences. Uh. So probably we have to go around that. Like if you're sharing courses with a lecturer, probably we need to know like, what platform they're using so that probably the student will, you know, when we transition into the lecture, they will find it hard. Uh. So either we tell the students, teach them to use this platform, or we have to maybe you know, change to that platform so that both lecturers use the same platform. Uh. So that's it uh, so for me for now. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Hijaz. Uh, Prof. Ami, I think you are from FSKTM. Technology might not be a problem for your students, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, we talk about students each day. They are either on their tablet or either on the phone. But I think to talk about FSKTM, it's much more. It's it's the the level is different. But but um, yeah. Uh, nevertheless, what are the challenges you you face when you want to practice flip classroom classroom? Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Eliza. So I think I would like to focus the one uh, that you mentioned just now, which is the challenges in preparing the materials. I think uh, I sort of try to reflect, well, you know, yes, that's it, true. Uh, we need a um, huge amount of time to prepare. And if you are involved with administration, that adds mm -hmm. another 
you know, uh, sort of challenge to you because at the end you want to deliver effectively, yet you, you know, juggling with other things. So I think to reflect, I think what I would suggest to myself and uh, maybe to other colleagues is that uh, since we know that the challenge is the time, so I think we need to be smart. Smart in the sense that uh, we need to be uh, very selective in, uh, you know, putting the materials that, as I mentioned earlier, the, the material should be, uh, of course, useful, uh, but uh, very relevant to that chapter or that topic or something like that or that week. So uh, how you identify relevance, how you uh, want to perhaps can suggest you that it might be useful. Maybe you can see from the number of viewers that perhaps uh, hints you that that uh, video or something material that can be useful, effective because many access to it. Uh, and then also I would suggest that uh, we try to uh, find a video, um, I mean, not that very long video or something like that, mm -hmm. rather than, uh, you know, short video yet uh, effective and useful, then we can choose. Or, as I mentioned, uh, if you want to have a longer video, I think it's fine, but we need to instruct. You have to pay attention, you know, during this period of time or something like that. So you can discuss further during the class, or maybe you can also uh, hint that there are a couple of things that you would like to be discuss together or explore or student need to answer during the class, uh, what part of things that maybe they can even give double, triple attention to that particular part. Um, uh, it should be short, concise, and as, in, as I mentioned, uh, you got very limited time to prepare on your own video, let's say for example, even five minutes, 10 minutes. So I think uh, I think during that 14 week, I think maybe you can have one or two a couple of your own video because sometimes students appreciate more if there is your own video. Uh, yet you still can use other video and then uh, focus on the one that you want to add to uh, to the topic. Lah. Um, so I think uh, another things that I think it would be it might be useful uh, that uh, sometimes when uh, you Dr. Jana said about ownership, you know, ownership in terms of assignment, for example. Yeah, I agree with that. So normally I would give a couple of at least of topic and sometimes I need to assign or they can choose. Then they can modify the topic according to their own direction. It's fine. And then the things that I think we'd like to add to ownership is about uh, giving them a chance to contribute during the class through, for example, you would like to ask them to a uh, certain week, maybe one or two group, create five minute video, what you're going to say about this thing, this thing, but you need to give clear instruction. And then maybe within their group or in partner, they can produce short video with their own creativity and something like that. You know, after 14 weeks, you have covered maybe 12 videos, unique video, different topics, and maybe uh, that speed up the process. Of course, uh, to me, you have to reward them by giving mark or you know, point or something like that for their contribution. So it's not just you sent, it's not lecture centered, student centered, it's not just in terms of their participation during class, but also the materials, uh, you know, little minor materials, but actually come from that group talking about specific topics and can be discussed with other topics. What do you think about what uh, Dr. Liza and her group has uh, prepared? So I think there is some things that I think can be used can might be useful lah, I mean to practice you know to you know if we were to prepare to have video it might take uh, ages for us to prepare uh, and then sometimes it's like Dr. Jana said sometimes they are very very creative um, so the video can be very interesting because mm. I've seen in my case for example teaching at the faculty of education so they came a lot of a uh, creative video and I really admire their video you know because they, they have to give in uh, that that subjects about uh, instructional design in so, uh, engineering education. So they they are very creative. They were very creative, and I think that can be implemented. Uh, and then I think uh, to add to that video, so perhaps uh, maybe five minute, ten minute video, they can have a questions there. They want to share with the class, or I or others need to answer, and you can make it during game based competitions to answer that question, reward them. Then I think that also one way of improving and helping you to uh, try, you know, in struggle, you know, in terms of preparing materials, you you can save your time and have more creative content by the student 
for all of us in, during the class. Uh, Dr. Eliza, back to uh, you. Thank you, Prohame. I think that's very true. And I think uh, in a way, it's kind of like helping us. Like So now we have 60, 40, 60 continuous and 40 final exam. Um, as a general, like I think uh, most uh, faculty are adapting. Maybe, you know, and and even up to now, I've been thinking like, you know, uh, we used to have like 20% ex mid-semester exam, 20% return, you know, and then maybe, you know, breaking it down to the smaller, smaller projects can actually, and then you have, you can, you can evaluate real time at that time. It doesn't, you don't have to go through their paperwork, you know, and that kind. And I do, I do believe that they gain more understanding when they do it. They do most of the work themselves. It's like when we did our PhD, lah, you know, like we gain like the information ourselves and it becomes us. Um, Dr. Ame, if you, if you don't mind me asking, is your class big? How, how many people um, are there in your class? Uh, my class, norm, uh, now normally my class, uh, not more than, I think last time interaction design about 60, 70 because uh, there's, uh, there were mobility students from overseas. Okay. So I think less than 100 now. Okay. Uh, between 50 to 100. All right. So I would like to hear from Dr. Jana because um, her class is big. So I think maybe like Dr. Hijaz, the class is small and it's much more easier to, I think in general, it's much more easier to manage if it's a smaller classes. But your class is like 100 and, you know, more than 100. What is your challenges in terms of preparing this um, initially and your challenges in class because your class is big and I think I do I think we do have classes that are big and small so maybe your I think this the the big classes are more challenging than the small classes so what do you think about that uh definitely jealous I the, the uh, he just only 10 students can <laughs> uh you can do a lot with with very small group but because my class is so big um the challenge is to manage the numbers mm. and with regards to determining what kind of activities can be effectively carried out uh, in in the big group. So the tutorial groups are about 16, 16 people per group. Oh. So I've got 11 classes right now. Um, I break down each class. So this is the challenge in, in trying to do flip class in a big, big uh, group you have to organize it properly. Mm. Um, so out of that 16, I break into a group, subgroup of four. So each group, every week, this is uh, on ongoing basis, they bought seminar presentation. So this is guided whereby the questions are given to them and then they have to present either video or uh, whatever presentation that they want to use, right? on that spe specific, I give them a, a list of questions. They pick and choose which question they want to do. Uh, and they discuss amongst the, the, the group. So there is, I wanted that interaction between the groups uh, because most of the time <clears throat> you find that the students may not be speaking to each other, even though yeah. they're in the same group. So macam kena paksa juga lah for them to interact in that sense. Yeah. Um, so organization definitely is is one of the major challenge which needs to be set from the very beginning. Mm. So managing their expectations, giving them specific instruction, what are we going to do, how we're going to do it, when we're going to do it, and the role of each and every one of them. Um, and I put down written instruction, masukkan dalam, dalam teams eh, for each task. These are the instruction. Uh, Cakap mulut tak masuk. So written, you know, you, you have to tell them and then the written instructions are there so that they can refer to it as and when. Um, and, and following up from what you said just now with regards to the um, assessment, I've never followed 60-40 for many years. So my, my course now is 80-20. In fact, one of the other courses that I had earlier is 100% continuous assessment. Tapi banyak sangat kerja. So you've got yeah. to understand that it's a lot of work and it's like 24-7 in terms of communication dengan student ni. Kadang-kadang tengah-tengah malam, you get WhatsApp, you know, uh, you know, doctor, can I clarify on this point? Can, uh, so it's, it's, it's not for everybody, I would say, <laughs> because not, unless you want to keep uh, that time frame bagi tahu diorang kan. But um, to me, it's okay, they can, they 
can WhatsApp me anytime because I choose whether when I, I want to respond, you see. I don't want to restrict them yeah. so that uh, at least mm -hmm. they know that I'm accessible. Mm. Um, reviewing the material, uh, not because there's a lot of material out there. I, I, I personally don't use much in terms of videos and things like that. Uh, but the students... The students will actually do it. They will get the material. In fact, their presentations are top notch, better than mm. mine, personally. Mm -hmm. Right? So, but Jong Pandai, you know, uh, they, they can play around with technology, which which yes. actually is uh, is something that they and something that they enjoy as well. Right? Mm. Dinosaurs like us, na experiment <laughs> something. You know, is like somebody has to instruct me step by step to do to do anything uh, dr zahir will know <laughs> macam mana nak buat ni you know we ask step by step student you just sort of give them a little bit of space and you see them run they will run with it uh, so that's that's the fun part right um once you get the buy in from the student once you engage them you see them bloom they will do much much more than what you expect and they have never failed to exceed my expectations when when i when i approach it this way right um the other challenge that i face is because it's group work whether it's a bigger group or smaller group because uh, on a weekly basis it's a smaller group on a on a group presentation and group assignment it's a bigger group tutorial group so 16 of them have to work with each other dia kena identify apa yang dia nak nak uh, focus on within the framework of of the course of course right um, and they have to manage in terms of siapa buat apa kadang-kadang bergaduh juga uh, you know how come this person I'm doing more that person tak buat and things like that so as a facilitator right uh, managing it from the very beginning is important and getting them to appoint a leader allowing them to de to delegate dia kena bincang sesama dia so i will actually just be on the sideline only when there there are issues right sometimes you see something's not happening they are not talking to each other uh, that's the red flag sikit lah uh, then then i would sort of step in and uh, find out okay how's ev everything uh, sort of Tanya a few questions and then you because I already know that there are problems, right? Uh, then the students will then one usually they they will approach me uh, privately. They tak nak buat dalam group. Each of them have got their group WhatsApp. So all these things need to be set up from the very beginning. Uh, they tak nak sebut dalam group sebab they tak nak offend the other person or you know they feel that they are right and the other person is wrong you know why should i do this why should i do that so that's a little bit of mediation going on facilitating uh these are communication skills that they have to uh, asah so that they can communicate effectively uh mm. with the other person as a leader what do you need to do benda -benda macam uh, it's not within our curriculum but we also assess yeah. them the soft skill yes the soft skills yeah so this these are actually something that can be quite challenging and overwhelming i think for if if you're not properly trained for it um i think many people will say eh, tak sanggup lah i tak sanggup buat benda ni <laughs> yeah. thank you but yeah i think um that's quite true because i think one of the management uh, meeting i attended um they showed a statistic of um, our students um students um working out there and one of these agencies of um uh, stated that UM students lack of communication skill. Yes, so perhaps yes. I think the flip is where we can sort of like train them. I think it's not just UM lah, tapi when UM is compared with private university, for instance, they perhaps they have been uh, practicing this, you know, um, longer than we do here. But um, yeah, I think this is the the teaching flip classroom is one of the way, I think Dr. Ijaz, Dr. Ame and Dr. Jana can agree with me on this one, where we can actually uh, facilitate, yeah. I think we being facilitated and facilitate our student to, to, to be talking more to us and and with amongst themselves also. I think Dr. Murudin mentioned sometimes they, they orang ni sama sama orang pun tak cakap, you know, let alone to talk and um to echo what Dr. Hija said. Sometimes they are scared to talk not because they don't know. It's just it's just the way our education system is. Can we, we are just uh, afraid to ask question. 
Um, We've been trained not to ask questions. Yeah, we have been trained yeah. to do that. So maybe yeah, think, that's that's. Yeah, I also tell the students. You are in university. You need to come to my office, talk to me. They are welcome <laughs> to do so. So I think all the lecturers here. That should be the mentality. They should come to us to ask questions. You no, know, talk to us. You no, know, have coffee, something. Not just yes. you know. It can be. And I, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I think it's true because you know if you. Like yeah, uh, I've 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 practiced some flip uh, uh technique in my classroom, and I I do I do still do the conventional teaching where I teach like one and a half hours lecture, and in the end of the session, when you ask question, uh, is there any burning question? You always get no question, and you you are left you left the room with um wondering whether they actually understand everything or they don't get anything out of your lecture <laughs> so i think you know from flip you can actually analyze the situation whilst you're doing it so my next question is how do you see this flip uh, this flip classroom um the changes i think in this is where i think dr nojana can share with us your slide later um what are the different what what do you feel the different between flip and conventional teaching in terms of your experience in terms of student experience and in terms of um the the marks for instance or students um under, uh, understanding you know in, in all aspects the difference between the conventional and the flip maybe we can go with dr he just was okay um i'll share my experience but this is before i attended the flip training lah. but in the sense i've been using flip training unconsciously in the uh, okay uh, this is my second year teaching right so last year uh i've been teaching one subject geostatistics lah. okay so um so i tried to be not to be a copy of my predecessor <laughs> so uh for example uh, i i mean i inherit the notes and I have to do my own uh, research lah about the topics lah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I have opinion about like mathematics, but still I have to learn. And I actually adapted the slides to be more, you know, make it more, more compact. Okay, I noticed the what the notes I had to uh, play. Some of it use animation from Windows ninety eight. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I think for all the new lecturers, I recommend please personalize your your slides to make it adaptable lah. okay sometimes mm. i know it's easy you know we get all these slides from professor who taught in the 90s it's okay but i think uh we are more aware that you know you should not put an entire page of textbook in one slide <laughs> students may not read it <laughs> so we have to adjust it so in my opinion i started to i have to uh, change the uh, material adapt it to what i think the young people will uh will accept lah okay i myself I mean i've been trained not to put more than four points in a slide so i had to change my, my slides for this course and also um i need to test after each topic whether the students understand eh? so what okay uh so i use tools like online quiz i uh, saw online quizzes okay after uh, not after each week maybe after every two weeks i just uh, do simple 20 question per quiz so i don't want the students to pressure to solve this is an online quiz and i give them uh, two attempts i don't want them i tell them okay you you get your first attempt you don't get so well do the second time you have to learn why you did wrong if you don't know you ask me i don't want to get you know our education like oh you you fail this quiz you fail so i don't i tell them you don't do well you can still get the right answer so i just tell them because it's something mathematics regardless whether your uh iq mm. high or low you can all get the same answer eventually okay um so i think i've been looking at my marks trend so i think um i mean i haven't compared with the marks for for my predecessor lah. i think i'm satisfied in the sense that i try to encourage the students to learn from their mistake Okay, so my assessment is rather than punishing, allow them mm. a second chance. I mean, not the not the not the exam, like for the uh, continuous assessment. I mean, it's more mathematics statistics, right? It's simple mathematics, but sometimes I need to know which topic they are weak at. So I know that the first basic statistics they, they are okay, but there's a parts of like hypothesis testing they are weak in that. So I notice that. When I compare the marks for assignment, the basis is okay, but the hypothesis they 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 don't do well because it's simple mathematics. 
but mm. I believe the I understand they don't understand the concept. <laughs> okay, so I focus more on the hypothesis testing. So after the first time I teach that subject, the second time, the, se the second semester I taught that subject, I spend more, I add one more week for hypothesis testing because I know they are weak in that. Okay, so that's how I learn. I try to be I try to adapt to what the student understand. Uh. Because I look at the output, how they perform in the exam and test as a benchmark, uh, which topics they are weak at. Okay, so I, in a sense, that's how it is. Uh. And um, that's how, um, you know, uh, how I think flip training, teaching, uh, where I think I try to, you know, try to learn from the students. Okay, learn from the students, look, monitor them. I mean, we have the data. Yeah. Uh, we outside, and then it's a lot of work. Like, I have to do my own. I have to I have to do the assignment. I have to uh, tally the marks and then talk to them. I tell them why this one question you cannot answer. You just need to describe the you know the well, normal distribution. That's all. So I need to talk to them and then I ask them why you can't answer. You just need to answer something. Why why is it blank? So I need to know what they don't understand. Okay, mm. so it has to be, you know, rather than, oh, the student didn't do well because it's a hard topic. No, we need to ask them why the majority of you, maybe like for even 40% who didn't do well in this section. <laughs> so I talk to them. Yeah, I think, um, yeah. I, yeah. yeah, I think the key words here is, is really communication because we want the student to be communicate, communicating mm. and we need to communicate with them yes. first. And I think the other, the other key word is, um, it's okay to get it wrong not yes. you know because it's a new it's a new it's a new concept and hmm. yeah i think our student has that stigma where oh i don't want to get it wrong and that's why you know sometimes yes. they don't want to speak and up and then they, they they're motivated when they got it wrong maybe the first yeah, my, my i don't think the first test always they don't they don't do so well compared to the second hmm. test like <laughs> so they do it in the motivator so tell them i need to remind them you can still learn yes. uh, this knowledge is Yes, and I think when they learn from the mistake, is then is that yeah. is, that is where they learn the most. Like you know, I think I I I, I talk based on my experience. If I I did something wrong and learn from it, I will remember for life. Yeah. You know, so maybe Dr. Ami wants to share your experience. Thank you, Dr. Ijaz. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Ijaz. So I think the changes or effects of flipped learning conducted during my classroom. I think um as maybe I've shared before, uh, you can make the class, uh, your class more uh, engaging, uh, more fun, something like that. Uh, so you have more active participation uh, mm. among the student towards you or among their group members, you know, so you, you have something to base on, something to talk about, something that uh, trigger them to uh, we talk through or something like that. So that uh, I can see that it's more engaging and more fun like, in, in terms of the participation. I think sometimes um, when you have this kind of sessions or, where you break into group or something like that, um, you can also their participation, uh, you know, if you rate the participation increase like, in terms of uh, how the participation, their attention also has increased uh, what I can observe from, from this kind of uh, practice. Um, and then I think another thing is that uh, it will be uh, easier for us to assess or gauge in terms of how much they have learned, whether they have developed their understanding on certain things or whether there's some things uh, not quite right or somebody or some group still got it wrong, something like that. So I think this is something that uh, through F FL you can pick uh, up pick up all these uh, things that needs more attention or to, to make sure that you can uh, discuss further during the class. Um, um, and then I think once you have uh, developed your understanding about your student, their, uh, your understanding of the uh, knowledge or topics, I think uh, you can also sort of uh, in line to what I mentioned just now to rectify it, you know, through more thorough discussion or something like that, you give more, uh, give some more time to discuss that uh, topics that most of the uh, students, uh, you know, feel challenging and to them. So I think that's something that we can do. Um, I think uh, I can also see um, that through this uh, practice. So in terms of the uh, C test, you have C test as a lecturer. So you can measure whether they are, you know, happy with their contents, in their the 
the experience that they have during class. So I think this is something is that has improved. You know, if you were talking about comparing uh, lecture centered and student centered uh, approach, so I think the student centered approach using with this uh, flip classroom or something like that, that makes that um, experience uh, improve, you know, compared to the traditional or lecture centered, you know. Um, I think so when you are clear about that topics, uh, challenging topics, you can always realign it and then um, to the what you expected, you know, to achieve. So I think that's very good uh, through this uh, practice. Uh, I think another one that I think uh, this is maybe not about the content was of late practice, but rather than in terms of how you mobilize the student during the class. So that is something so it's quite important because you want uh, in education, we call up a psychomotor, right? Where you need to move actively during the class, not just like next to you or something like that closer to you, but you want to the class entire uh, to mobilize entirely. So this is also some things that can trigger that um, the experience of a classroom more, you know, more fun, more engaging. So you, you sometimes is the also in terms of the constraint of how uh, the the classroom is set. You know, for example, the the position of the chair, desk, and stuff like that. But when I I was lucky because uh, when I conducted uh, the uh, my class interaction design, for example, uh, my class was uh, in the cube. So as you know, uh, in the cube, so there's a it's a bit more flexible, so you can rearrange the desk everything easily. So that helps us, uh, you know, all of us to participate uh, more engaging and more fun during the class at uh, Eliza. So I think uh, the combinations of the uh, the learning material and also the instruction and then the position of the you know the, the class setup is very important to make that flip classroom experience more uh, effective doctor thank you dr Ami. Uh, i think one thing i picked up from what you have just said is uh, movement i think conventional teaching students sit for one hour and you know i think the most they can listen to you is 30 minutes. I think that is, it upon anecdotally, I think uh, in the past I've looked at people, papers saying that 17 minutes, 30, I think the most student can pay attention is 30 minutes and then after that they start looking at their phones and that kind of stuff, kan? So yeah, movement I think is one of the thing you can, we can, and and, and we, that is what's up, something that we can practice um during these flip classes. All right, over to you Dr. Jana. Uh, we see, yeah, uh, we can Nampak see, tak? yes, we can see your, okay. your, yeah. So this is, this is basically my introduction class, uh, the introduction hour, you know, the, the first hour of the, the course where I explain what I'm going to do to the students. Uh, ah, I won't okay. go through all the slides, right, but just, just to uh, go through it, you know, I explain about teamwork, right, um, and I think for us to, to engage the students, we have to actually figure out what is it that we want to assess first, apa yang kita nak assess, and how we are going to assess it. So this has to, this is the preparation that that needs to uh, to be carried out. Um, and and this basically, <laughs> this picture basically illustrates um, how messy it can be. Like macam mana nak assess apa yang kita nak assess, yeah, all these things. Depending on the courses that we do, of course, yeah. Uh, uh, individually, we'll know we know our our uh, the scope of the course, right? But what is it? What is it that we want to assess? Uh, if you look at outcome based education, we we need to look at the final final outcome, and then we work backwards in terms of delivery, in terms of engagement of the students. Uh, that's to me. That's what uh, is effective about flip learning. Yeah, flip classes. Uh, and and this also illustrates something that is in 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 a very concise term. Usually, when we teach, we lecture. We say, "Okay, aku dah ngajar dah, aku dah ngajar dah." You know, but then whether or not the students understood or can can actually practice what we have we have taught them. Yeah, just because you've taught doesn't mean that they have learned. And that is that is a very powerful mind shift. Uh, on our part, 
Because most lecturers say, okay, uh, this is my lecture hours. Bagi aja. One way traffic kan, kita bagi aja. Uh, how much of it is actually received is another uh, another point. Yeah. Uh, so I want to share. Okay, this is this is the what I did last session, right? Um, sixty forty, but the forty is the test and the individual assignment, right? So these are individuals. The rest are all uh, group. Okay, this is semester one. So you've got group presentation. Yang ni dia pilih sendiri topik semua. Group assignment will be based on the group presentation. Seminar presentation is every week. Right on where where the the questions are, are given by me, right? And this is a summit summative part and formative part. Yeah, the assessment. So in doing summative, uh, formative assessment, macam macam lah. You look at the presentation. So we are looking at communication, right? Uh, looking at every level. Those are the things that we are assessing. Title pun I bagi makah. Because it's not easy to formulate the yes. title. Mm. Right? Uh, for them to do the research, the group work. So all these things, the division of tasks, the presentation, the discussion, you know, in the group, whether it's on Teams or WhatsApp. And they are written, the output later on. So all those are, are assessed. Now, I did a comparison. Second semester was taught by another lecturer. Conventional method. Tapi dia cuba jugalah, dia, dia ada group presentation and learning journal. Yang lain dia tak buat. Okay, so it's it's 60-40 as well but you can see it's the difference in terms of the uh, engagement of the students. Yeah, The results, right? So these are the results. In semester one, um, this semester two ada pula additional one student. I don't know how that got, got in there. But anyhow, look at the result. If you look at the flip classes in semester one yang I bought, right? The result is actually quite shocking. Where almost, what, 80% 80, 80 dapat A tau. So, kita tak ada lagi tengok bell curve, bell curve. Yes. It's mm. no longer there, right? Because they are all engaged. They are all participate. They all participate. They all... Uh, you know, we're, we're very involved in the in the whole process, and it's I'm not talking about just one activity. There were multiple activities, so banyaklah assessment ongoing yang tengah buat ni semua, right? And, and they reach the they reach the learning outcome. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Uh, uh, we had a number of the written group written assignments, yang submit to journal and publish. Ah. Okay, so very impressive in that sense, yeah? Yeah. Um, whereas the conventional one, the bell curve is there. You can see the bell curve there. Mm. Okay, so, but like I said, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. So this, this semester, that this was, when I, when I decide what assessment to do, I discuss with the students as well. Macam mana dia nak, you know, what are the activities that they, they are more keen on. So they decided on case analysis. That was what, you know, their, their participation. So I got the buy-in from them in the sense that you involve them in deciding what kind of assessment yang dia, you know, they, they, they want. Bukan semua, but yes. give them one or two that they can, mm. they can decide on. So dia okay. seronok sikit lah, yeah. Betul. So that's, yeah, so that's, that's the part that I wanted to share. So if if you are not still not convinced about about the outcome of flip learning properly carried out it is very very effective uh, and I you know I I don't use quizzes because that um, I think the level of of uh, knowledge and all that I think quiz is is a bit too easy for my students so we go we go straight into analysis discussion yeah mm. uh, mentioned too. So depending on the courses, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the level yeah. of um, co uh, classes as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that is very interesting number to see there, Dr. Jana. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so I think we've come to the, the end part of the session. Uh, and before we conclude, I would like to hear like, you know, one or two minutes um, from each panel 
um, words of encouragement for people out there to practice um, flip if they are not yet practicing. So maybe we can start with Dr. Hijaz. Your two minutes starts now. <laughs> okay, uh, to all the lecturers uh, new or those who are trying to new, learn new things, I think flip learning is a useful tool uh, for us, lah. Especially now we are, you know, we also we have wear too many hats. Huh? We are uh, researchers mm -hmm. and we are teachers, but we can actually adapt using flip learning. We can try to, you know, we don't have to feel guilty anymore. You can use flip learning to accommodate when we had we cannot attend classes. Uh, we can still be in the class, but in a different way. Yeah? So we can use tools that, you know, I encourage using Microsoft Teams. Okay, so it is a very good tool compared to Spectrum. I, I'm not that taking Spectrum. This is my preference. <laughs> you can make small classes mm. uh, under the different Breakout rooms. rooms. So that, uh, yeah. So yeah. That you can monitor the tutorials online uh, or when they, you see, uh, I, you know, ask them any problems. I tend to use Padlet. Also, mm. another way for you to distribute materials, but you have to subscribe lah, because you only can do 10 Padlets for the free version. I use, I pay Padlet. I don't know how much. I just charge to my credit card, but it's very useful. I can also look back at the students. This is a good, good way yeah. to de democratize discussion. If mm. they're shy, they can just post it on a Padlet anonymously, or they. I find they put more information in Padlet rather more than they talk in the class. Uh, mm. Probably either they are shy or there's not enough time. So there's a lot of tools out there for you to help you in your flip learning. Eh? So everyone have their own tools that they can, uh, they're more familiar. Okay, so find your own tools to help you for the flip learning is to help you teach the children more, uh, teach the students more effectively. I think that's it for me. Thank you. I think, uh, yeah, I think um, ADAC is always there. Yeah. Uh, to facilitate if you are just lost and you don't know where to start or you start halfway and you don't know where to how to continue always you know people in edek umu dr zahir is always there um, and they're very helpful when it comes to yes, i always yes. just text you know dr zahir in the middle of nowhere yes, but yes. i need this sometimes lupa nak bagi salam pun yes, <laughs> all right think, um, yeah thank you yeah they're very helpful okay dr ami your two your last words of um you know how to empower us um, I think, uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, I think as a lecturer, I think you not just lecture all of us, the student. I think you are going to enjoy this uh, flip classroom very much. I think it's okay if you to start at you know ten percent of knowledge of flip classroom is fine, but over the time you can improve. But I think the uh, as I mentioned, uh, it should be enjoyable. You must feel enjoy. You yourself must feel that before you want your student to enjoy that session together. I think this can help uh, to make our class more fun, more engaging, enjoyable. Uh, I think as uh, Dr. Liza mentioned, the edX is always there, it's very helpful. So I think it's something that opportunity that we can leverage on. And uh, inshallah, I think uh, everyone can get used to it slowly, gradually. And at the end of the day, we want to see the outcome achievement from the student more compared to us. And last but not least, I think as the instructor, we need to be closely uh, with, with them. It's not just like macam lepas tangan, but you also to you yourself to be you know, you know actively engaging with the discussion. Uh, instruction is clear. I think you your role is very critical there. Uh, mm. Although you democratize the the discussion, you need to acknowledge, appreciate every single thing that being discussed throughout that session. Okay, doctor. Uh, thanks, Prof. Ami. Um, Dr. Jana, last uh, words from you? Uh, I, if, if anybody wants to try uh, flip learning, I think first and foremost, kita lah, kita diri sendiri kita, you know, that we, we are willing to learn something new uh, because it requires a lot of effort. But as Dr. Amir said, it's a lot of fun actually. Uh, I've enjoyed. I've I've been trying different methods uh, over the over the years, the past few years especially. I've had students uh, in their group presentation, what drama, uh, what mock trial, uh, sketch, whatever you know, different different uh, methods of delivery. And when they do that, and you know, and they get a case from you know from newspaper reports, and then they analyze it. Benda yang live life issues like that um, mm. uh, and I and in in doing so not only the students learn I have learned a lot 
from the students. Mm. So the, the the process of the process of engaging, uh, teaching and learning is is a continuous process. I mean, we guide, but I don't I don't claim myself as the expert or aku tahu segala galanya, which is not possible. Right. Okay. Uh, many a times, students far exceed my expectations because they do their research, they they query, they tanya benda-benda yang kita tak terfikir pun. Mm. Uh, so that's, I I think that's to me is the achievement. Yang when students starts questioning and and looking at things from different, you know, thinking out of the box from different angles, uh, and and querying the status quo. Macam undang-undang ni kan, you think that it's only one one interpretation, which is not true. There are many different ways of interpreting a, a, a statement, for instance, kan. Mm. So uh, anybody who wants to join uh, or or to 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 start flip learning is is a scary process initially. It's about tak tahu macam mana nak buat, but like you said, you know, assistance is at hand, right? Um, and those of us who have gone through part of it, mine is modified. It's not fully flip, right? Uh, Whatever yang sesuai dengan our 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 own courses, I think you need to to trust yourself as well mm. um, to do it because once once you've I I will not go back to conventional lecture tutorial. Other lecture, tapi in terms of assessment, definitely I'm going to go for uh, flip flip learning, which is more effective, and the results show it. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah, you already you. have the data, right? So yeah, yeah numbers don't lie. I think yes. Dr. Hijaz uh, can can agree with me. Yeah, numbers don't lie. So you know, if the numbers are there, right. you know, everybody. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Um. So I think that's um conclude our session. I would I would like to um take questions from the floor. If there's any questions um from mm -hmm. the floor, um. Hang on. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, there's one question. Any of the panel can answer this. Um, if we want to get advice regarding flip learning, who should we contact? I think um, Dr. Zahir. Dr. Zahir. <laughs> we, 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 all, we all say Dr. Zahir. Or I think, <laughs> or perhaps maybe, um, you know, the, the panels here um, agrees to share the knowledge. They can be boleh. rich. Yeah, um, you know, personally, boleh, boleh email. I think, you know, um, we are all reachable through emails. And I, I hope you all don't mind. If you, yeah, are, boleh, boleh. you are, you receive emails with regard to flip learning um, um, in the future. Yeah, I encourage the lecturers to attend uh, once the flip training uh, is just uh, once is enough. When so, you can get the video from Dr. Zahid, it's much more effective. Learning tu, tapi tak, tak, tak perasan yes. pula kan, we don't yes. even realise that we are doing it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it, even after I attend, I realise I've been doing it. So it's actually <laughs> good. It allows us to, yeah. to realise it's something possible. It's, it's acceptable to do flip learning. Otherwise, we think it's something uh, against the <laughs> the convention. Yes. I think I think the other way, uh, the other uh, technique to slowly embrace um, flip learning is um, to slowly practice it across fourteen mm. weeks. So we like we we have fourteen weeks of teaching. So perhaps maybe you do like you know uh, three or four uh, weeks of flip, and then when once you start. Feeling, or maybe the earlier ones when the load of teaching is not that heavy, or you know, it's it's a, a introduction to something which is very it's the the load um, of the, or the content is quite light. Maybe that's where you can start practicing flip. And once I'm sure when you start enjoying it, then you can you can start you know using it more in your class and perhaps you know in all the courses that you teach. Um, is, is there any more questions? So yes, there's um few more questions okay so um if there's no more question i would like to thank um all the panel dr hijaz uh, prof amiruddin and dr nojana chu for your time during uh, lunch um uh, sharing the experience um, practicing flip classroom with us i would like to give one announcement uh, on behalf of edec our next flip session is on the 18 but apparently 18 is cuti for everybody to go out and mengundi balik kampung and whatever. So it is now postponed to a new date that will be uh, announced later by ADEC. Okay. So um, hang on, let me see the chat room if there's any more questions. If if I can uh, say something. Uh, yes, yes, please do. Uh, I think one of the side benefit of all this process, if you know, once you get a hang of it, 
right? Uh, at the end of it, I find that students dia dia lebih rapat dengan kita, hmm. lebih sayang dengan kita, <laughs> and and vice versa. You know that that connection is there. So you know, uh, that's that's something very rewarding. I can't put dollars and cents to it, uh, but that that outcome actually is something that you know you 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 create that relationship not just between yourself and the students but amongst the students they are in their learning journal they will say oh you know in all my three years four years here tak pernah i uh, bermesra dengan my cosmic macam ni because when you have to be in the trenches working working with them so you get to know each other much better so the relationship actually improves as well yeah thank you mm. yeah i think i think yeah um the flip learning technique is not just about teaching the theoretical part of what we have to deliver to them like like i think dr dojana said earlier it's more it's also um uh teaching or getting them to practice all the soft skill that we were talking about in the last couple of years we were worried about soft skill and that kind of stuff and i think practicing flip is kind of like automatically um do it without we need to um you know um do extra effort to 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 get them to improve on the, the on, on the soft skill um yeah another announcement is our next uh edac next um uh course on flip learning if you want to register if you're not yet registered please register so saya dah macam bring marketing for edac plus sekarang ni please register uh to our uh, next session on the 30th of november so that's our next macam dr jas kata datang to the session once get familiar with the tools um yang dr zahirudin akan introduce and get get um apa ni get to know the people uh yang yang in the same course so that we can share knowledge um yeah, and experience it's also a place to meet other lecturers from other faculties eh? sometimes yes. we are siloed so yes and that is like a place for we meet people from you know other faculties yeah the one way to sign <laughs> yeah all right i think um that um, ends our session today again um, um, thank you so much for all the panels of the uh, prof ami and dr jana for um helping us with today's session uh, kalau jumpa-jumpa kat depan nanti boleh lah kita pergi minum kopi-kopi talk about flip learning more boleh boleh uh, <laughs> all right thank you very much thank um, you. yeah thank see you. you again soon bye assalamualaikum assalamualaikum have a good day everyone